just start uh, knocking on the door? Uh, the wanna... door the door is open. Okay. I thought it was locked. No. No, that's Frankie what said it's said. locked. Yeah. Not Frankie, oh. Charlie. Charlie. Charlie said it's locked. Oh, someone said it was locked. Well, I guess it's winter and the sun rises real late, so yeah. Because a small town, many centers aren't open 24 7. It's not open 24 7, but it's no, morning but it's time. It's already 7 a.m. Yeah. Okay, I get in there. Help! I've been bit! Uh, <laughs> you see a man pop out from behind the counter or behind a door. And he's like, ha We have just opened the doors. How has this happened already? I oh, walk in behind here. him. I walk in behind him, arm covered in blood, and like, oh, there was an with incident an with an axe. You, you see a an man, accident. a man in his 50s <laughs> with a distinguished scholarly appearance. He has salt and pepper hair, wears wired rimmed glasses, and he is seen in a white lab coat. Where's his picture? Well, his I have the stream uh, rotating pictures. I'll point out when it actually shows up, or I can I, I'll I send it to the, the Discord. <laughs> I'll send it to the Discord as well right now. Um, we should start uh, labeling these guys with name the pictures with names. That's too much work. We don't have them all memorized yet. <laughs> no. well, then how are viewers supposed to know who they are? Because I'll point it out. Or players, for that matter. Yeah. What if this is my first game? There you go. That's what oh, you see. Oh, so distinguished. Oh, he actually is on stream right now. <laughs> Perfect. What's his name? Uh, well, you don't know his name because he had well, you haven't asked or introduced. No, he doesn't have a badge. He's the only doctor. What, what, what doctor is kind of doctor doesn't have a badge? I That's think one. most of them. I don't, <laughs> if he's the only doctor, doctor there would probably be a, like a. <laughs> Uh, they like a, don't hear, but like there will be plaques saying "Doctor Whoever's there, Office." There is plaques. There doctor. is plaques on the wall that say "Dr. Jorgensen." Aww, oh, my doctors have like badges, or it's like on their all of yeah, their a name stuff. tag. Yeah, it's but like a this is again. a small clinic. I don't think they'd actually need that. Yeah, um, no. Our our doctors in our small clinics do not. Yeah. How observant are you, Charlie? I'd say what pretty. What is the role? Because this is like the third time you've held my gun. And you'd, yes. notice, you'd notice BPD engraved on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized uh -huh. what that is. We're going to need to have a bit of a talk later, okay? Uh, anyway. What is this? We're, we're gonna need a bit of a talk later. Oh, I, I uh, missed what Wyatt said. No, no what's, what's engraved on it? BPD. Boston, Boston Police, Police Department. Department. Oh. <laughs> anyway. So, um, it's an at you've... Who hit him with an axe? She's outside. The green-haired one. Or did she come in? They... They're Sorry, outside. did they come in? Sorry. Uh, I don't know. They, they're they uh, probably hiding out. <laughs> it is green hair, now, though, right? They are it's probably hair, going yeah. to yeah. wheel down to get coffee and go back to the lodge. Okay. Uh, they're <laughs> yes. not coming in. Um, And what what bit you? Oh, it was a lizard person. Lizard -like it person. was a bear. Uh, is he yeah, having he's very, hallucinations? He's a very cold bear. He he has it's like red own, eyes. It's like eight foot tall, and he's like ah. Well, most he bears are most bears are about eight feet on. tall when they stand on their hind legs. So I mean, it makes sense. Um, have you seen pyramid. doctor? Have you seen this kind of mark before on any other patient? Bear bites, yes. Um, no. So does this look like a bear bite? I don't know. It looks like a bite at the moment. I haven't taken a closer look. Who's going first? I only have so much time. He can. All right. Let's stitch up this wound and uh, get you all patched up here. Okay. 
Um, I am obligated to tell you what medications I'm on, and it's a lot of amphetamines. Let's go into my office, and we can chat in there. Uh, so he takes you I, into the don't office. Don't ask me any questions, because I will answer them all. He takes you into the Victor office. Here. Uh, uh, Victor, yeah, did Victor's you go here. in? Okay. So after he's in the office, I have a number to Victor. I, I don't know if we should give him his gun back. Uh, at the very least, I think we should uh, take the clip and empty it for him. I, I'm pretty sure he stole it from the Boston Police Department. Did didn't he did he, tell you he got it from he a not, cop. Did he not help the situation? I know he's a lunatic, but... Do you trust him not to shoot, like, a person? No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying he did help in the situation, so it's like, yes, he is a crazy person. Okay. I don't know. That was When crazy. we're in a bad situation, I guess he can have a gun then, but... Not, not any other time. Can I retcon something real quick? Depends on what it is. I she just stayed in wanted... the cave. <laughs> they. <laughs> oh, they. <laughs> they the um, no, they did not. No, um, I just wanted to, like, before he gets all stitched up, I wanted to get a picture of Oliver's. The wound? Heart. The wound. Will you allow that, Oliver? Well, I don't usually pose shirtless, but okay. For research. It's, it's for like a calendar or something? A little school project? No, it's research. Okay, yeah, research. I gotcha. <laughs> and he like sucks in his gut. And like, Flexes a little. Alright, all right, I'm ready. He sucks in his gut and I just get my camera like as close to just the wound as I possibly can. Still right, get a picture right. of like a vein <laughs> <laughs> bulging and popping. <laughs> um, cool. Anyway, so uh, that's fine. Um, as you are chatting about this, uh, probably that? about 15 minutes later, uh, Oliver emerges with a fresh stitch job and kind of bandaging put over top of it. Um, all right. Uh, who's next? That'd be me. Uh, you go in, and, uh, as you walk in, um, are you taking your, like, jacket off and stuff? Yeah, I would. It's, I'm sure this is when I would notice the frostbite. Too. Yeah, as soon as you take it off, he's like, oh, my, my god, you have, you are frostbitten from the, where does this stop? And he kind of, like, pulls up your pant leg and he's like you are frostbitten from tip to like your upper chest area the tip of his toes oh uh, I must have gotten wet when I was out there <laughs> phrasing um <laughs> uh so I can give you an ointment for this and some medication to make it a little less painful for you but uh, you need to take care of this. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, and he stitches up your arm and then gives you some cream and uh, medication. <clears throat> and then kicks you out. Nice. Um, I don't think anybody else got else injured. In? I don't think anybody else got injured. Other than Frankie. I'm injured, I'm just, I don't Frankie didn't go. Yeah. I don't think we'll, so, I think everybody's fine. Yeah. When I'm back with the group then uh so it turns out like and 80% Oliver, of my body has frostbite. Oliver, you get to get shocked when uh you find out there's no bill. <laughs> Alright, how much how much do I uh owe you, Doc? Um it's you don't. Alright. Actually, does he I don't have know a health that's... card? Because even yeah, in Canada, you true. need the health card. I think you would get billed if you don't have the Canadian I got my traveler's insurance. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, I think your company yeah. wouldn't get billed, technically. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. didn't do have a company. Kayak.com Okay, it's fine. It's insurance. fine. Never mind. I just was I just making it's comments on the Canadian healthcare system, but that's fine. 
All right. Um, I have other patients coming in soon, so uh, if you are all good, then please leave and come back if you have any other axe wounds or bear bites. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Oh, you hear that? It was just a bear bite. It wasn't as crazy as we thought. Okay. Yeah, that, let's head out. Okay, just, did the doctor actually think it looked like a bear bite? Uh, no, like he but he also he didn't want you it. in this office because it looked like a person bit him. It is oh. a, It was a humanoid-like creature, so it had a face like a person. What kind of teeth? Like, flat Just normal. and everything? Yep. And he okay. didn't want to get involved because that's not his job. Did the inside okay, so... of their mouth feel warm? No. Which makes which makes perfect sense because lizards are cold blooded, so they would naturally take on the same temperature of their environment. I don't think it was That's a lizard, not... Oliver. Oh, they're all lizards. Hey, why don't we go back to the lodge and That's for a second for them, second uh... breakfast? Yeah. We can talk about what we saw, like get this down. Collect yeah. our information. Okay. Uh before I join them at the group, I'm gonna go to my room and try to treat my frostbite. Put on uh lighter clothing while I'm inside so it's not like rubbing on it and crap, and then I head back out to the group. <laughs> Okay. Are we in the conference room? I go yep. back to my room as well. Oh, also hide Judy somewhere in a secure location in my room while I'm in the room. Okay. Oh, you monster. <laughs> so, uh, what what do you guys what did you guys find? Uh, anything fancy? Anything cool? I'm gonna like pull my shirt up to show the like stab mark. Did you fall on some ice? Fall no, on a rock? The, no, it's from the thing. Whatever. There was something in a cave. Something icy, humanoid. I don't know. I got stabbed by ice. Because I hit the thing. Oh. It managed to take me and gave me frostbite to most of my body. Nothing Oof. frostbitten on Who my bite. Right? Nothing get frostbite. I um, kind of like the surrounding would be a little bit cold, but it wasn't on you very long, so no, not really. Okay, okay, cool. All right, Oliver I... runs down the stairs with a skip in his step. Woo! Hits the bar. Can I have a copy? Extra strong. I think it's whatever that ice, growing ice was that gave me the uh, So just a just a refresher, because you weren't here for the first uh, game. Uh, in order to get stuff. Uh, you can see the Nahani Lodge and the Glacier Ridge Diner are side by side and they have a connecting thing. You need to ring the bell in order to get service from Evelyn, who is in the Glacier Ridge Diner after the uh, lodge opens. So if you want a coffee, you'd have to go to the Glacier Ridge Diner. Oh, okay. And the conference room is here, though. Conference room is in the Nahani Lodge, which you guys are renting out month by month. I see. And we don't have a coffee machine? You have a coffee machine here, but you're not ordering a coffee. Alright. All right, that's exactly what I said in front of the coffee machine. And then started yeah. making coffee. <laughs> Alright, guys. So, um, you already encountered something, hey? Yeah, uh, all the footage is fucked by... Oh. Are you kidding me? No. Everything Wyatt, what, what's going on? Oh, you know, the, the guy had some kind of anti-electrical equipment. Why? Where's the camera? You see, the thing about these creatures is they they affect their surroundings pretty deeply. Um, 
I don't know what kind of uh, sensory uh, organs that they have that interferes, but like flickering lights yeah, and disruptive like an electronics. Uh, it's, it's just a heads as... up. Wyatt did lose the camera. Wyatt, where's the camera? It's in the woods. Oh, why didn't you tell me that, Wyatt? I would have, we could have gone back and got it. I asked him about it and he just walked off, so. Wyatt, please keep in mind this equipment is very expensive. Yes, we can get a new one if we need to, but I would prefer not to replace them. You can tell that to the bear. You guys came across a... English? You guys came across a bear now? A black bear. Okay, well, that's why we have security to protect us against that stuff, so... Where were where was our security? He was right there with me. He dragged me away from it. Okay, uh, uh, I that's good. Saved you from the bear, which is where the camera got left. All right. Well, I saved you. I'll go back and get the camera. Okay. Thank you. Um, for future reference, uh, you just type that. Just make sure that if the camera is lost, just come back and get it. Can we put a GPS on the camera in case he does lose it? I mean, yeah, we can put a tracker on it, but keep in mind, we do have some trackers. We'd like to keep some for tracking the monsters as well. Um, if we can this get one on to them. This the opportunity we've had to get the camera. Things the have been of kind of fast paced this morning. No, I understand. Month, I'm just saying. have an air tag on it. Yeah. Um, just like I said, I want to make sure that we can track these monsters if we come across them. Maybe we chuck one on them or something. I don't know. The one we faced, it wasn't like really wearing clothing or anything, was it? No. And it disappeared and moved around. I don't know if this thing can have a something put on it to track it. There's got to be more just than wearing one. wearing a suit. And that's how it got from in front of us to behind us in a hall that it wouldn't have been a in a cave that it wouldn't have been able to get past us. Hey, I can't help it if you're bad at your job. Look, it being able to teleport is a completely logical explanation. So is, is Charlie a... not being able to keep it from getting to the fr from the front to the back? Well, none of us did. Um... Victor, on the other hand, has been very useful today. Victor also let it get past. Dumbass. Yeah, I was there as the, well. The dumbass was towards uh, Wyatt, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, out of curiosity, like is there, like a role in Monster of the Week for, like, artistic ability or anything like that? No, just draw whatever you want to draw. Okay. Roll for autism. If you can wow. draw it in real life, you can draw it in the game. <laughs> Alright. Um, while we're all talking, I'm not listening, like, 100%, so I'm trying to, like, sketch out what this thing looked like. Okay, that sounds good. Um, all right, any information that we should be aware of? Well, their, bite mark, their bites hurt like crap. Good to know. Start again. If it takes you, it, it has. Dark, Where did the uh, tracks start? They were started at Turner's Pub. I deleted them now because they've melted. That's what uh, that's what uh, Finn told you guys is that's why you had to be there early in the morning because the tracks melted. It seems to have control of some sort of darkness that will spread ice. So it can manipulate ice and darkness. Yes. It also uh, travels on all fours, uh, has red eyes, kind of see-through blue human skin. Footprints Kids. and human handprints. 
It's eight feet tall. And can, we, can we roll uh, investigate the mystery based on all this new, like having encountered the creature and now reflecting on the stuff we learned? Um, uh, what are you wanting to ask? Um, what this creature might be. So it, we saw that it manipulates ice and as well the darkness. We saw it's like an eight foot tall creature, humanoid. It's like a biped, but its hands got opposable thumbs. Correct. It seems like mm -hmm. it would be research based off of what we learned, but I don't know how that would work in this game. Uh, basically, you tell me what you want to research, and I give you your research. Because guess what? We, I've done a lot of prep here. I have stuff for you to research. Yeah. We so, research into cryptid creatures based off the stuff we know about it. You were also told in the last game something to look up. Which was? What was it? I wasn't uh, here. I know you weren't here, but uh, the person who should know this is here. Oh, I know you're. I know you're talking about me. Yeah, I know it's not me. <laughs> okay, the one thing, one thing that I did have written down, but I can't remember because I, I've just written brief notes. It says we learned that they wanted to scare, not harm. So it's like I'm wanting to kind of bring that to our attention that it was it was like a reaction a reaction to our uh actions obviously like because frankie was the one that whipped out their axe also when i shot it it didn't really hurt it it just chipped off a bunch of the ice on it right yep that's what you uh that's what you observed yeah so and the reason i bring that up is part of the reason why this game is you need to do some mystery solving before you go into battle yeah. um these monsters are not usually killable by your conventional means yeah. yes correct you need to because... figure out how to actually take care of them so when Frankie hit with the axe, what did, what, what like damage, it, if any? So it hit into the side of the monster. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean it did damage, but like, like anything, if something's going to get hit with a sharp object, it's going to hurt. Not necessarily no, 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 I'm not kill them, I'm not but it's going to hurt. Yeah, I'm not talking about hurt. Because it's like, but did it do any dam? Like, did did we see that it did any damage to the creature? In the sense of the same way the bullet did, yes. Gotcha. But there was like no, uh, like blood spray or you didn't see any blood at all. Yeah. Okay. So first off, a creature that has everything to do with ice. Logic dictates that its weakness would be heat. Do we have a flamethrower? Also, do we want to kill it or do we want to try to capture it? How? how I, I, I have a question. How exactly do you plan on capturing it if you told me that it can teleport? Okay, we get a string. Right. And it's tied okay. to a stick that's holding up a cage. And we put a candy. But if it can teleport can. out of the cage, how does yeah, that work? That's that's but, not going to work, Oliver. Well, if it teleports, or unless there's two of them. So we get two. You think it was two creatures? creatures? Well, I think that there was one over at the hotel at the same time as the pub. Why? Because there was a separate trail off of that one. Someone told me. Even if it can teleport, from my experience, there's 
always a way to capture. Mm-hmm. Okay, how did... Who was the one that told us about about that? That they wanted to scare us, not farm us? Wyatt. And I don't know if Wyatt actually would have told you that, but... I didn't actually tell anybody that. Yeah, so okay. you wouldn't have had that Okay, sorry. So yeah, because I thought... I have written, Wyatt thought someone was chasing him, learned that they wanted to scare, not harm, heard whispering and giggle. That's a misleading sentence, because uh, someone was chasing Wyatt, it was me. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 I know, yeah. It's like, I knew I knew that, but it's like, he learned that they wanted to scare, not harm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I found that out with my power, but I didn't share it because it didn't seem important. Okay, so would we have observed that, though? Like, can we have observed the fact that... So here's the thing. I would, I would okay, say we definitely right now think it wants it harm because it charged us and fought back. And here's another thing. Go ahead. Day, day by day... Yeah. It's opinion can change. It's opinion. The creature's yeah. opinion Correct. can change? Yeah, so uh. yesterday it may have wanted to scare, not harm. That doesn't mean it's the same today. Yeah. And we were in its home. Yeah. Or were you? So it was defending? Yeah. If I had strangers in my home, my opinion of them would definitely be different than a Fina. Yeah. Okay. So can oh. we do a role for investigating this mystery to find out what kind of creature this is? So I'll let you roll to investigate a mystery, but it's going to be a little bit different than what you're wanting. But I'll Sounds let you good. roll it. I'm going to re-listen to this. Oh, Did this thing is... look like it had hair? No. So that's only an eight. Um, in fact, I'll show you exactly what it looked like. Wasn't the didn't you have a picture of the thing with red eyes? I showed you the red yeah. eyes, but I can show you the whole thing. Oh, sure. I I was just edited red that eyes picture. A from it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just have to actually send you the picture, and maybe I'll put it on stream too, so they can see what you saw. Scary, spooky. See what I see. Spooky, scary. Skeletons? Yep. Oh, he's like translucent. Oh, neat. That's what does I told it look, you. Does it look like he's like made of ice? Yeah. Oh. That That is okay. what they saw on stream right now. Okay, so... Tall guy with... Uh... Pigment issue. Yeah, tall guy with pigment issue. You're right. And an inner light. So what can... What did you get for your investigative mystery? Eight. Two rolled. Eight? So you get to pick one question. What kind of creature are we dealing with? So, you do some research on the internet and you come across a article called arctic folklore and shadow spirits legends of the north uh, the article basically delves into some of the folklore of the arctic region exploring different legends that speak of shadowy entities haunting the cold wilderness According to those myths, um, these creatures are said to be manifestations of unresolved emotions and disturbances in the natural balance. Some speculate that encounters with these spirits can lead to mysterious disappearances and chaos. Um, you come across another article called The Shadow Realm, A Scientific Perspective. Uh, it's a speculative article. Uh, showing that there is an existence of a shadow realm uh, that overlaps with our reality. 
It draws on quantum physics and theories of alternate dimensions. The author explores the idea that certain conditions, such as the extreme cold, could create rifts between our world and this shadowy realm. While considered fringe science, this article raises questions about the natural uh, nat nature of reality and the potential for otherworldly entities to cross over into our domain. And then I'm just going to give this to you because you were told about it. Uh, you look up the article you were told about. Cryokinesis and the Manipulation of Ice, Fact or Fiction. It's a speculative piece on the concept of cryokinesis, which is the ability to manipulate ice and cold. Uh, while often associated with myths <laughs> and fictional characters, the article explores in instances of individuals claiming to possess such abilities. Uh, they had different scientists weigh in on the possibility of these supernatural entity entities harnessing uh, cryokinetic powers, and they raised the question of whether the entity in Glacier Ridge could be using ice as a conduit for its presence. It specifically stated Glacier Ridge in the article. I actually had that line written. Yeah, I told you, you, you had a thing that you were told to look up. Yeah, I actually had search about crack kinesis and the manipulation of ice. Fact that the article. Yeah, uh, it's written by anonymous. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Awesome. So that makes sense. So what we were what we were attacked by wasn't actually a creature. It was just like a, an ice avatar of what these lizard people oh, are using. God. <laughs> hey, uh, how? I'm what? With you there for a second. You said that, you said that, okay, so as we were going into the cave, it got colder, correct? Yes. Okay, what is the temperature like here? Like, I know it's cold right now. Last time it was minus 28. But it does, but this valley actually gets warm. Correct. I mean, it's only minus nine here right now. Well, I guess it would still be minus twenty-eight ish because that was. We've only we've only gone one day into the future here. What day is it? Uh, January something, January twenty. Uh, let me pull it up. January twenty-third. Should yes. be because the twenty second was, was our first 22nd day. Second was the first day. Yeah. Okay. So what? Okay. Well, the so are we going to start? Are we going to start researching that cryokinesis going on the World Wide Web? All right, so the article said that extreme cold can it is like uh, the, the right conditions for them to actually cross over into our domain, like get to Earth here. Like all these lizard people are coming from somewhere, right? And so if they're using extreme cold, then this would be like the perfect place because it's cold a lot. So if we can keep it warmer in time, I'll need to think more about this. Get my thinking juice. Is that coffee? Thinking juice. Yep. With crushed up Tylenol. Yeah, Tylenol. <gasps> Don't lie. <laughs> All right, so you're searching more into cryokinesis? Yes. Since we've been surrounded by ice this whole time. Okay. In the case that is true, if it uses extreme cold to move, we would be able to trap it with heat. Somehow get it into a warm, sealed area it can't get out of, and it should be trapped if that's the case. 
can we heat all the area around that cave? With what? Heat. Hey, how are you going to get heat on a massive scale like that? Let's burn the forest. Well, no! No, 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 no. We are not starting a forest fire, no. Oliver. <sighs> All right, let's let it eat the town. That's I mean, don't they have evidence of that? Of what? Where the guy that was doing just that made setting the forest fires? Maybe that's what he was doing. Oh, maybe you saw Smokey the Bear earlier. What? What? Oh my. I can guarantee it wasn't Smokey the Bear. The Smokey black the bear? bear I, I don't think Smokey the Bear is a black bear, to be honest. I think he's a brown bear. He's a brown bear. And black bears are always starting fires. Um, I'm going to try digging more into the shadow realm side of it. See if things don't line up with reports or research or stuff like that. Okay, so first thing we're going to do then is we'll we'll talk about the uh, cryokinesis. Cryokinesis, and then I'll go into the Shadow Realm one. Um, um, okay, so after... I'm not gonna make you investigate a mystery again because you're you're diving more into it. Um, one sec. What are you wanting to know exactly? Are you just looking more into cryokinesis in general? Well, at this point, until I can see what other avenue to go down, because everything that like it's like uh, with Charlie. With the frostbite it was like it was it was like the fact that as we got deeper into the cave cold it's like he looks like ice icy ham like it's like obviously it has something to do with manipulating ice but yeah so i'd probably go down that route until i found some other Okay, so it sure. takes you a while. You start typing in different keywords, trying to make it make sense to you. Uh -huh. um, you land on the one that you probably should have got right off the get-go, but you wanted to try different things to see how it worked for you. You come across an article called Cryokinesis Unveiled, a scientific inquiry into Glacier Ridge's enigmatic phenomenon by Dr. Elias Redwood. I'll let you write down that name in case you want to. Yes. Redwood? Uh, e. What was that? Yes. Another E? <laughs> hey now. I have so okay. many different names here. Don't even. <laughs> Redwood. How many of them start with yes. an E? I don't know, actually. Uh, in the annals of cryophysics, the secluded town of Glacier Ridge has emerged as an unexpected focal point, drawing the attention of scientists and researchers seeking to demystify a series of perplexing occurrences. These events attributed to the presence of an entity colloquially referred to as the Polar Shadow Stalker have prompted a rigorous scientific examination into the realm of cryokinesis through purported manipulation of ice and cold. Conducted by leading cryophysicist, myself, the investigation aims to scrutinize the empirical basis behind eyewitness reports detailing the manifestation of a shadowy figure with distinctive red eyes. My meticulous analysis seeks to discern whether the observed phenomena aligns with the established cryophysical pr principles 
or indeed introduce a, an unprecedented dimension to our understanding of sub-zero sciences. Residents describe the polar shadow stalker as an elusive entity capable of influencing the thermal environment inducing an anomalous coldness that permeates the air. I, in my preliminary assessments, emphasize the necessity of meticulous instrumentation to capture and quantify these purported cryokinetic effects. I postulate that, if validated, these abilities could redefine our comprehension of thermodynamics and the latent potential for human influence on environmental conditions. The scientific community remains cautious, uh, yet intrigued by the unfolding developments in our town of Glacier Ridge. Dr. Rachel Thornton, a respected cryophysics expert, uh, underscores the need for methylod methodology. I don't know that word. Methodology. Methodolo methodological. That's what it is. Uh, oh. Precision. Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence, she asserts, advocating for a thorough explanation of alternative explanations. Exploration of alternative explanations. That including, makes more sense. <laughs> including atmospheric uh, anomalies and localized meteorological effects. As the scientific inquiry into the polar shadow stalker progresses, Glacier Ridge stands as a unique crucible for testing the boundaries of conventional knowledge. My interdisciplinary approach encompassing cryophysics, meteorology, and atmospheric dynamics positions this study at the forefront of scientific exploration. The potential revelation of cryokinetic principles would not only reshape our understanding of physical sciences, but also underscore the profound interconnectedness between folklore and empir empirical inquiry. The cryokinetic enigma of Glacier Ridge as investigated by myself, promises to unravel layers of scientific intrigue, offering a glimpse into the undiscovered frontiers of cryophysics. Okay. All right, so... We will definitely want to speak to this Dr. Redwood. Was Dr. Thornton from this area? No. Thornton? Right? Thornton. Okay. Can we call this Dr. Redwood? Is there a contact the editor or something? No. Uh, if it's a... Well... Generally, uh, official scientific reports do have a way to reach out to the person, I believe. Not like a phone call or... Uh, do they? Not usually. You have to dig for that somewhere else. Yeah. Fire him an email, then. Well, if he's from this town, other people have had to have heard of him. I'm shocked that nobody would have said something about this guy, though. Oh, let's grab a phone book. Black. What? Oh. Oh, he's a quack? That's probably why no one's mentioned him. Oh. I heard something entirely different. All right, met phone book. And I look up Elias Woodstock. Redwood. That one, too. And then, beep bop boop. Is it there? Nothing. Nothing there. Okay. Um. Maybe Redwood's just a pen name. Well, why don't we go ask, uh, Evelyn? Evelyn will know. She's good people. Well, she's right. been here for a while, so. If not, I'll let Judy talk to her. Hey, Charlie, I need no, Judy. No, 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 no. It, it's like you don't even want answers. By the way, Oliver, where where did you get Judy? Oh, from a cop. How? Don't ask, man. 
Well, he wasn't right. going to use her anymore. Was it a dead cop? Okay, I'm going to walk Ooh. over to see Evelyn. They can fight about that themselves. I gotta go. Uh, Evelyn is dealing with the breakfast rush, if you want to call it that, in a town of 500 people. Um, yeah. She is just dealing with a couple of the older gentlemen that frequent her establishment on a regular basis, two of which you met before. Um, yeah. And uh, she, you catch her eye and she's like, oh, um, hi, what, what can I do for you? Um, when you have a minute, I'm looking for a certain individual. In t I don't know if he's from town. Uh, Dr. Redwood? Have you ever heard of him? Yes. Yes, I have. Good luck finding uh, him, though. Am I the only one that suspects that we have a murderer in our group? And what? <laughs> they... Yeah, I don't trust Ryan right. either, man. <laughs> it's like... What's even his deal? <laughs> so, he's... Is he, rec you know, a recluse or something? Is he reclusive? Where, like... Well, ever since Rachel went missing, he has not been seen. So, I assume he's somewhere in the woods. That's usually where he was. But, I don't know. Was Rachel another name mentioned in the... That was yeah. is that Rachel Thornton that you're talking about? Yes, um, they were partners. Um, How many people have gone missing? Well, in the past, how long are we talking? Well, when did uh, Rachel disappear? Um. We're talking about a year and a half ago. But that's the thing, is like these people go out into the woods and then who knows what's gonna happen. There's bears, there's wolves, there's uh, different animals out there that can all oh my. all cause things. Oh my what? Bears and wolves and other things? Oh, oh that's why he's saying, oh my. The forest out in these parts can be dangerous. That's why yeah. we're here. Like, well, preferred, no, particularly me and Victor. Uh, hey. I don't know if you've seen them around town, but, like, her sister is still looking for her. Um, there's What's missing posters name? occasionally. Eliza. Eliza. Where do I find Eliza? Another E. You know what? I also have Henry. I also have Duncan. I also have Malcolm. I also have Charlotte. What? Where, where can I find Eliza? Uh, where can, can I find also. Eliza? Uh, she runs a store in town, but I gotta figure out which one now. So the question oh. isn't that you have other people with other letters. It's that there will be a disproportionately large amount of E's. You also have Edmund. Whatever. Uh, she runs the grocery town, grocery store in town, grocery town. Um, okay. If I were you, though, I would not bring up um, uh, the other Her guy. Her sister. The other guy. Elias. Elias. I wouldn't bring him up. She does not care for him. She does not like him, and uh, she blames him for the reason why her sister is missing. Okay. Alright. So, as you guys, I assume, head out to kind of go to the grocery store to find out uh, any information, uh, you actually do see on one of the power poles around town a missing photo I'm gonna stay in the lodge by the way okay I want to go to Thompson's repair shop okay what are you what are you doing there um we went out in the woods earlier 
And my bear got a nick in it. Can you fix it? Oh, okay. Well, give me a second here. So, um, no, they can't. <laughs> so, as you head up to the shop, uh, you see different cars and things out front. Um, it's a modest workshop type style building, uh, various tools and equipment scattered around. Um, you smell like engine oil and metal in the air. Um, and you hear the low hum of engines and the clattering of tools as you walk up to it. Um, and then as you walk up, uh, you are greeted by... Wait, so he's going to a mechanic to get his teddy bear repaired. I don't know. Is that what you're planning on doing? <laughs> I probably should have told you what the repair shop was, but... All right, I'm just going to keep doing it. You still going? Okay. Oh, why? I thought you were smarter than this. Um, where is my guy? I would have taken him there to the is. furrier. I would have just fixed it. Uh, you head up to the shop and you're greeted by this man as he walks out and he's like, Oh, hey, little buddy. How are you? I, this is a, this shows up as the repair shop in town and I have something that I need repaired. Oh, what's that? I tell you, bear. Oh, man, you that gotta sucks. wash your hands first. It got snagged in the woods. Okay. Uh, come on in. And he goes inside, oh. washes his hands. Um, you can see kind of in the backyard, there's like kids toys and stuff out there, like a uh, slide and like like play structure like a four like three year olds two year olds younger kids and he's like uh so you were just walking in the woods alone or no there was a bear Is... <laughs> sorry do you need help are you okay no i'm okay Everything was not alone. There was a bear. Oh, okay. Um, you you let me know if you need any help, though. Like, I'll I'll help you out. It's fine. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you, though. Uh, and he goes like into his bathroom and grabs the first aid kit out of it and pulls out like, uh. A needle and thread for like stitching up wounds and he's like it's not the first time I've had to do this um, not for customers of course but my my daughter has ripped a few toys in her time and she he's sewing it up and he's like all right well um good as new uh, what do I owe you nothing don't worry about it it's fine okay thank you my brother uh, gave it to me. It means a lot. I understand. Um, I'm missing my brother too, but um, he'll come back. I hope so. Um, I hope mine comes back too. I'm sure he will. Now, Is uh, anyone else completely bothered by the fact that this man has a belt full of tools and we cannot identify even a single one of them? Nope. Because <laughs> everything is AI art. <laughs> that, that should make you feel well, good, though. The one in the middle looks like it's a Black & Decker issue notebook. Because <laughs> they make those. And you slap Black and Decker on anything, and people will buy it. Come on. Um, oh, I think anyway. he's got a screwdriver and a radio a under his arm. A it look, okay, right? It looks like it could be, but so like a we're getting off track here. Anywho, right. Pearl. All that was just all that was just informed to you about this man is he's a very kind person who repaired a teddy bear for a young boy because he brought it to a repair shop. Yeah, and why it's not going to tell us that he has a brother that's going to come back one day. 
I don't think his brother's gonna come back. I think his brother's dead. Yeah, his brother was killed. Um, no. And you know that already. I'm not talking about Wyatt's brother. Oh, the other Maxine's brother. Maxine's upset that she doesn't get to know all the juicy details about the repair guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh... Go to the repair shop now. <laughs> well, if also, you'd go to the repair shop to get something fixed, <laughs> then you could find. Also, uh, what? Also, <laughs> Uh, while you guys were doing your research and stuff, I would have slipped out to the woods and got the camera. And okay. Probably health care for teddy bears is also free. Copper. Hey. Okay. Where is everybody um, going? Crazy. Hey, I, I am curious whether uh, Jedediah Jebediah? Would do I have Jebediah or Jedediah? Jebediah. With a B. Jebediah's Jebediah. dead. Jebediah. Oh, oh I've got Jedediah. I think I might have just spelt it wrong. I would be curious to see whether whatever his name is would help us or have seen uh, Dr. Redwood. Jebediah is dead. Dead. Oh, Okay, who's the... the lodge is a memorial lodge. Sorry. Okay. And Frankie did not ask the name of the guy there. Did they? Edmund? No, no she knew his Edmund. name. Edmund, he's not going to help. He knew, gonna... They knew his name. Okay, sorry. Yes. So um, Frankie... Frankie actually introduced himself? Got his name? Yeah, because I got his name they had to set the... an oh, appointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually found out. Yes, right. Sorry. Okay. They might not, or Edmund might not help Frankie. He's not going to help at all. He hates people who are looking into this kind of stuff. No, but we're looking for a person, though. He's in, he's in the hunting game. He's not in the search and rescue game. The most dangerous hunt, you know? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you guys are all going to be going on fun little mysteries, but I also realize what time it is, so we are yeah. going to be calling it right now. So, uh, yeah, we are going to discover more next week, possibly. I don't know. You guys can play from Florida, can't you? Um, Jealous. Anyway. That's we'll f that's we'll find out. Crazy happens is in Florida. We'll find out. We might we might end up taking a break for a little bit, but I feel like that's too long of a break. But we'll see. Um, I better not see y'all as the headline of any Florida man and or Florida women stories. Exactly. <laughs> but we're not from Florida. It'd be like they would say Manitoba man eaten by alligator. <laughs> I have the opposite perspective. I want to see you guys label this a Florida man story. <laughs> all right, everyone. <laughs> I hope everybody has a great night, and we will see you all next week. Maybe it depends because we'll have very we'll have very few players if we play next week without uh, uh, Victor and uh, Maxine. So mm -hmm. anyway, have a great night, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. Y'all yeah. come back now here.